The story of Fayetteville, North Carolina and the surrounding area spans hundreds of years. It was a place where people came seeking opportunity in the 1700s, an area where Revolutionary War heroes on both sides of the conflict lived and died, where men wearing blue or gray fought for their beliefs. It was a bustling center of trade and transportation and later a place that became famous for the army post on the outskirts of town. Today, the Fayetteville area is a special place unlike any other. It's a friendly place with people from all over the world creating a rich mixture of ethnic communities. Whether you're a first-time visitor or you've lived here for years, you're invited to discover for yourself what makes the Fayetteville area one renowned for its history, heroes, and hometown feeling. The Fayetteville area's rich history is fascinating. Much like many other early colonial communities in the U.S., People of various nationalities crossed the Atlantic to the New World in search of freedom. First the English came, then a large group of Highland Scots sailed up the Cape Fear River. Here they discovered open land and thousands of acres of longleaf pines. They had found the perfect place to call home, and they called it Cross Creek. Many more settlers came up the river to join the Scots, and another little town called Campbellton was created about a mile away. Both Campbellton and Cross Creek were hotbeds of politics during the American Revolution. A year before the Declaration of Independence, inspired patriots met at a tavern near the corner of Bow and Person Streets. They defiantly signed the Liberty Point Resolves. The signers pledged to go forth and support each other against British aggression. After the American Revolution, the two towns were joined and the name was permanently changed to Fayetteville to honor the Marquis de Lafayette. Fayetteville is the first city named for the Marquis and is the only namesake city he actually visited. Greeting Lafayette during his visit was a Fayetteville Independent Light Infantry organized in 1793. The FILI is the oldest North Carolina military unit in continuous service. Today, the FILI serves as North Carolina's official historic military command. The fascinating FILI Museum is open by appointment for guided tours. Another important event took place in the 1790s. Henry Evans, a black Methodist preacher, came to Fayetteville on his way to Charleston. He decided to stay to minister to the people of this area. This marks the traditional beginning of Methodism in Fayetteville. His body lies entombed beneath the chancel of the church, built on the original site in 1893. In the early 1800s, Fayetteville prospered and grew as a center for trade and transportation. Riverboats went up and down the river carrying goods and passengers. Hundreds of buildings lined the busy streets of the bustling city. Three buildings of note that still exist from this age can be found at Heritage Square on Dick Street. The Sanford House, built around 1800, was once the central office of the U.S. Bank in North Carolina. For many years, it was a private residence and in 1945 was purchased by the Women's Club. Just next door is the Oval Ballroom, built between 1818 and 1823 for a wedding reception, and later was moved to this site. The third building is the Baker Haig Nimick's House, built around 1804. It features a unique barrel staircase. All three properties are open by appointment. The beautiful State House, which once stood where the Market House now stands, was where North Carolina ratified the U.S. Constitution, chartered the University of North Carolina, and ceded the Western lands to form the state of Tennessee. And it was here that Fayetteville, one of the temporary capitals of North Carolina, missed being the permanent capital by a single vote. It was a prosperous era for this community. Then, on Sunday, May 29, 1831, the unthinkable happened. A fire started in the kitchen of James Kyle's house on the northwest corner of Market Square and spread rapidly through the wooden buildings and homes, engulfing the state house and spreading out from the center of town, burning every building along the way. Despite the best efforts of the fire department, the fire raged for six long hours, destroying more than 600 structures. More than one-third of the population of Fayetteville was left homeless. It was the most devastating fire disaster in America up to that time. The entire nation was in sympathy, 
Money and supplies poured in from all over the country to help the citizens rebuild. And rebuild they did. The Market House, one of the most photographed buildings in North Carolina, was built on the site of the old State House and served as our seat of government for more than 70 years. The building has served as a public market, art museum, library, and bank, among other things. It is the only national landmark in Fayetteville. First Presbyterian Church was rebuilt using the surviving brick walls from the fire. The steeple bell, still in use today, bears a Latin inscription which translates, I perished in the flames on the 29th of May, 1831. I rose from the ashes through the generosity of friends in the Second Presbyterian Church in Troy, New York. St. John's Episcopal Church was also rebuilt on its original walls after the Great Fire. The church is basically the same with one exception. Ten pyramidal spires replace the one tall spire that formerly housed the town clock. The Belden Horn House too was rebuilt in 1831. It was later sold to a prominent physician who boarded patients in at least one room, making it the first hospital in Fayetteville. Several years later, James Kyle rebuilt his home. Determined that it would never again be destroyed by fire, Mr. Kyle built his walls 18 inches thick and filled them with sand. From 1963 to 1990, the Kyle House was used as offices for the mayor and city management. One property that escaped the Great Fire is Cool Spring Tavern, believed to be the oldest existing building in Fayetteville. The tavern was a popular gathering place and in 1789 housed the delegates who ratified the U.S. Constitution. The superhighways of the day were made of wooden planks. In this area, they extended like the spokes of a wheel with Fayetteville as the center. Fayetteville became a boom town. Then the Civil War erupted. Many important Civil War sites are in the area. The Fayetteville Arsenal was constructed high on a bluff overlooking the city. The Arsenal was controlled by the Confederacy during the Civil War, making Fayetteville a target for General William T. Sherman. Sherman occupied Fayetteville from March 11th through the 14th, 1865, and destroyed the arsenal, among other structures. The arsenal was demolished by Sherman's engineers. Nothing was left standing. All that remains today are some foundation stones. A modern ghost tower approximates the shape and size of one of four original eight-sided arsenal towers. The history of the arsenal and Sherman's occupation of Fayetteville is told through exhibits at the Museum of the Cape Fear, adjacent to the arsenal site. Several other buildings on the site help tell the story of our community. After destroying key buildings and businesses in the area, Sherman's Union soldiers left Fayetteville and headed north. Along the way, they met Confederate resistance. The Averisboro Battlefield is the site of a fierce battle where Union and Confederate soldiers fought for two long and bloody days. It was the prelude to the Battle of Bentonville, the last major battle of the Civil War. The Averisboro Battlefield Museum tells the story of that battle and the sacrifices made on both sides. After the Civil War, the Fayetteville area began to rebuild again. Some of the bricks salvaged from the Fayetteville Arsenal were used to construct the exterior of the 1868 McPherson Presbyterian Church. Another historical church of note is St. Joseph's Episcopal Church. It is known for its exquisite Tiffany windows and for one of the oldest pipe organs still in use in America today. The 1897 Poe House is open to the public for guided tours. This restored home preserves life as it was in the late 19th century. The Poe House is part of the Museum of the Cape Fear Historical Complex. The Roaring Twenties were a great time of prosperity in the region. Many of the buildings in our downtown area were built during that time. Today, you can take a walking tour through Fayetteville's historic downtown district to see the restored buildings and visit interesting shops and restaurants, which are a part of our exciting renaissance. About the same time that downtown was prospering, Camp Bragg was established on the outskirts of Fayetteville. The very next year, Pope Field was named. Fort Bragg took on additional significance during World War II when it served as a training ground for all five airborne divisions. As thousands of brave men and women poured in, the area grew to meet the needs of these soldiers and airmen. 
The Atlantic Coastline Depot became one of the busiest in the nation for new recruits coming in to train and soldiers shipping out to war. The station is still used today as a stop for Amtrak. Other fascinating historic sites are scattered across the city and county and tell the story of our exciting and sometimes tumultuous history. But there would be no history and no Fayetteville if it weren't for the heroes who've helped make this area great. Heroes of yesterday and today. Some of our earliest heroes rest in the oldest cemetery in Fayetteville. Cross Creek No. 1, listed on the National Register, contains the graves of some of Fayetteville's most prominent citizens, dating back to the late 1700s. Several graves from the Civil War are located here, surrounding the oldest Civil War monument in the state. Heroes of the modern wars can be remembered at several area museums and sites. Fort Bragg, home of the 82nd Airborne Division and the Special Forces, has two museums well worth a visit. More than 3,000 artifacts from World War I through present day are housed at the 82nd Airborne Division War Memorial Museum on Fort Bragg. The JFK Special Warfare Museum maintains a large collection of weapons, military art, international cultural items, and a behind-the-scenes look at unconventional warfare. The Airborne and Special Operations Museum, located in historic downtown Fayetteville, is devoted to the daring exploits of the heroic Airborne and Special Operations units from World War II to today. Also located in historic downtown Fayetteville is the North Carolina Veterans Park, the state's first park dedicated to veterans from all branches of the military. Here you'll learn about the many heroic deeds of North Carolina veterans throughout our country's rich history. Just across the street is Freedom Memorial Park, honoring our community's fallen heroes, beginning with World War I. It is a reminder to everyone that freedom is not free. A hero of a different sort is none other than baseball great Babe Ruth. George Herman Ruth got his nickname The Babe while he was on a farm team in Fayetteville in 1914. And the babe hit his very first professional homer right here in Fayetteville. That baseball tradition lives on today with the opening of Segra Stadium, home of the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. The stadium, located in the heart of downtown Fayetteville, draws fans of all ages who revel in America's pastime while enjoying extras you can only find in the home of the brave. Our community abounds with an incredible diversity of friendly people who give the area a warm and welcoming hometown feeling. And what could be more hometown than being designated an All-America City? Three times. And neighboring Fort Bragg has been named an Army Community of Excellence. It just shows that we've got hometown spirit and then some. We celebrate that hometown spirit through a variety of festivals and celebrations throughout the year. The Martin Luther King Celebration honors the life of the civil rights hero with a parade, concerts, lectures, plays, and exhibits. Each April, the Dogwood Festival brings excitement to Fayetteville with a huge family-friendly street fair and live music to entertain everyone. And in May, don't miss the Field of Honor, a moving tribute honoring our military heroes. This massive display of flags is in full glory at the Airborne and Special Operations Museum from Memorial Day through June. Each September, the International Folk Festival celebrates our diverse community. During this exciting weekend, enjoy the Parade of Nations, live entertainment, and international foods prepared by people from around the world. On Veterans Day, we celebrate and honor our military neighbors with a ceremony and huge parade of military units and equipment. And on Dickens' holiday, the day after Thanksgiving, the whole community turns out to light the town Christmas tree, signaling the beginning of the holiday season. Every fourth Friday of the month throughout the year, Fayetteville's historic downtown comes alive with an art celebration and gallery crawl. Join thousands of others to enjoy live music, free food and beverages and arts of all types. Of course, every day is a celebration at Fascinate You Children's Museum where fun, exploration and entertainment live year round. Another year-round pleasure can be found in our many beautiful green spaces. We have more than two dozen city, county, and private parks scattered throughout the area for hiking, fishing, horseback riding, and picnicking. Cross Creek Linear Park is a magnificent greenway that winds through downtown Fayetteville, highlighting the natural beauty of the area while connecting historic sites and points of interest along the way. 
it connects with the Cape Fear River Trail, which is part of the East Coast Greenway system. This paved trail is perfect for walking, jogging, biking, or rollerblading along the Cape Fear River. At the north end of the Cape Fear River Trail, just two miles from downtown, lies the Cape Fear Botanical Garden, a beautiful space with more than 2,000 species of ornamental plants and many special events throughout the year. Adding to our hometown feeling is our thriving arts community with a national reputation for excellence, thanks in no small part to the Arts Council of Fayetteville, Cumberland County. Throughout the year, the arts take center stage with live performances, special exhibits, pop-up musical acts, a film festival, and more. There is truly something for every taste, any time of the year. Catch a rousing performance by the Fayetteville Symphony Orchestra, the oldest community-supported orchestra in North Carolina. Take in a great performance at one of the several stages in town. You'll have a chance to see everything from Shakespeare in the Park and Broadway hits to homegrown, cutting-edge plays with actors from around the world and across town. You have only to look around you to see that the Fayetteville area really is filled with wonderful things to see and do. Whether you're a native, a newcomer, or a visitor, we think you'll agree that our corner of the world is the perfect combination of history, heroes, and a hometown feeling.